first of four, three people killed in shootings over the weekend, and at one of those scenes, there's been four homicides in the past year. The push happening now to increase safety in this area. If you're looking to get a COVID-19 vaccine before Thanksgiving, you might be waiting a while. What's leading to weeks and delays in some central Indiana counties. And today we've seen temperatures reach the 70s in some spots. I'll talk about how long this warm up lasts and when changes make their impacts here in central Wisconsin, Indiana. A controlled burn in Bloomington may have released contaminated ash into the air. How the fire department training is leading to health concerns for people in the area. From Indiana's number one news source, this is Fox 59 First at Four. Three people are dead after several shootings across Indianapolis this weekend. One of those deadly shootings happened at the Five Guys restaurant downtown. Police believe the shooting was targeted and not a random act. There was also a deadly shooting on the city's east side at an address where there's been multiple deaths dating back to last year. It is our top story first at four. Good afternoon to you. I'm Daniel Miller. And I'm Birchelle Edme. Fox 59's Jesse Wells takes us back to that scene and explains what happened. The name on the front of the business has changed since last year, but the deadly shooting over the weekend marked the fourth homicide on this property over the last 13 months. That has the family of one of the victims wondering what the city plans to do to stop any more killing at this address. In the parking lot outside Unique Food and Catering early Saturday morning, 31-year-old James Smith died after being shot and rushed to the hospital. That is ridiculous. How could you even want to open a place where three people lay dead at your door? Elaine Rivera doesn't know Smith, but her son, Juan Rivera, was one of three people killed last October, standing in line outside the same location. At that time, it was called the famous Grand Nightclub, and the triple homicide remains unsolved. We live on, but the hurt is so severe that we're weak. Elaine claims police told her the nightclub operated without the proper licenses in 2020. County tax records show ownership of the property is the same LLC that controlled the building last year despite the name change. It's time for someone to start standing up and maybe these killings will stop. All the officers out there are taking this serious. IMPD says in cases like this, they'll increase patrols and get other agencies involved to make sure the business is being operated safely. We'll invite everybody in, code enforcement, uh, health department, fire marshal, capacity issues, uh, any lever that we can pull to say you need to improve the conditions at your location. Finally, the triple homicide from last year and the deadly shooting here over the weekend all remain unsolved. Anyone with information on those cases can still contact either Crime Stoppers or IMPD's Homicide Office. Jesse Wells, Fox 59 News. In addition to the Massachusetts murder, another man was killed over the weekend at an apartment complex on Butler Terrace. Also, Christopher Kawaja was shot and killed at Five Guys in downtown. Police aren't sure whether that case is criminal homicide or not. As our city approaches a tragic new record, the director of community violence is stepping down. Shauna Majors took that job in the summer of 2018. Her last day will be this Friday. She told our Russ McQuaid, you see there this weekend, that, quote, it's just time for her to take a new path. You can watch that interview now on fox59.com. Meanwhile, the mayor's office will hire two deputy directors to fill this role. A Fox 59 update. IMPD says a house fire on the near east side was part of a homicide. Firefighters say this home you see here caught fire Friday morning on East Vermont Street. They found a man's body inside and considered the circumstances suspicious. The coroner's office identified the man as Charles Burgess Jr. His death has been ruled a homicide by multiple trauma. That means he did not die in the fire. We're working this afternoon to learn more about the investigation. In the meantime, if you know anything that could help police, call Crime Stoppers, the number 317-262-TIPS. We've also learned that a 15-year-old was hit by a car in Fishers yesterday evening. The crash happened just before 5 p.m. near the intersection of Allisonville and White Oaks Drive. 
A crash reconstruction team believes the 15-year-old was running across Allisonville Road and ran in front of a car. The teen was taken to the hospital. We are still working to get an update on that teen's health. Police say the driver is cooperating with their investigation and no citations have been issued. And let's check in now with the Weather Authority. It is a warm fall afternoon here in central Indiana. Plenty of sunshine with temperatures, as you see there, in the 60s, even popping up in the 70s. We are looking live over downtown Indy. It's going to be a great night to get outdoors. Meteorologist Tucker and Tico is here tracking our Monday night forecast. Yeah, and it is going to be a great night to be out there. It has been a great day already to be outside, too, with those temperatures reaching the mid and upper 60s, even low 70s depending on where you are here in Indiana. 66 our current temperature and we were up to 68 about an hour ago, but clouds have slowly made their way in and limited a little bit of that warmth that we've seen today. But as a whole, it is still a very sunny day and you can see on our satellite, there's only a little strip of clouds making their way through. Otherwise, uh, really the entire region very sunny right now. Though we will be talking about more clouds later on tomorrow, and we'll get to that forecast in a bit. But for now, enjoy the nice weather. Again, that wind, uh, enough to add a little bit of a refreshing feel to the air. And temperatures in the 70s in Bloomington and Shelbyville right now. The rest of us in at least the mid-60s, and that makes today our warmest day since October 20th. The evening will stay mild, too. Those temperatures do not even get into the 40s until about midnight. And even so, we shouldn't be talking about 30s again for a few more nights, but we will be talking about 30s very soon later in the week. And you will want to enjoy this weather and I'll have an update on those changes coming up in my full forecast. All right, Tucker, thank you. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic here in the state. Just over 1,100 new cases of COVID-19, as you can see here, reported today. Right now, the state is averaging nearly 1,800 new cases daily. The positivity rate increasing today now at 7.9 percent. Over 1,200 Hoosiers are in the hospital with COVID-19 right now, using 14 percent of the state's ICU beds. As of today, 52 percent of Hoosiers over the age of five are now fully vaccinated. Younger Hoosiers ages 5 to 11 are now eligible to get their COVID-19 vaccine. As of today, the Department of Health reports more than 6,000 doses have been given to this age group so far. If you're looking to get a booster shot before Thanksgiving, you might be waiting a while. In some counties, appointments are booking out weeks in advance for both booster shots and pediatric doses. Fox 59's Lindsay Stone shares what's causing this delay. When you have older populations that are at greater risk for more severe disease or that need that booster, and then you have a new group coming in, uh, that's kind of occupying all those same vaccination sites and getting those appointment times. Thomas Dzinski with Fairbanks School of Public Health describes it as a perfect storm. Children ages 5 to 11 are now eligible for the vaccine at the same time many adults have become eligible for a booster shot. We only have a limited number of vaccination sites across the state. Last week, Marion County Public Health officials told me same day appointments were available. However, when we searched for available appointments on the state's website today, the next available appointment was in two weeks. We are discussing possibly opening up a special clinic either later this week or next if that becomes necessary. Melissa McMaster's administrator for the Marion County Public Health Department says appointments are encouraged but a limited number of walk-ins are welcome. If you can't find an appointment where you normally go, um, think about a pharmacy or some of the other options available. Hoosiers can get a vaccine at any location in the state regardless of county residency. If anyone is struggling to get vaccine, maybe um, the closest vaccination clinic is full or they're unable to get in, come see us. Stephanie Mellinger, administrator for the Madison County Health Department, says same-day appointments and walk-ins are available. Okay, we have appointments open today. Health officials are encouraging children and adults wanting a booster shot to get their dose before Thursday to be the most effective before Thanksgiving. Is it takes about two weeks to be effective. The more people we get vaccinated, including young kids, um, the, the less community spread, fewer people getting infected, which means fewer opportunities for mutants or variants to emerge. Again, health officials are encouraging Hoosiers to go to vaccine sites outside their area to find the soonest appointment available. Lindsay Stone, Fox 59 News. An update from Eskenazi Health today. The company has resumed elective surgery, surgeries that is, at its facilities for the first time since September. Those procedures were put on pause in order to relieve the strain on staff and make more space for critical patients. Both IU and Columbus Regional Health are still suspending non-emergency surgeries indefinitely.
A training exercise by the Bloomington Fire Department is now leading to health concerns for some residents. What was found in the debris from a burning home in the nearby neighborhoods? And we're staying mild for now, but there will be changes later on in the week. We'll talk about everything ahead in my forecast. Here's what's coming up next at 4.30. For years, this big red building has been an eyesore at the corner of Morris and Meridian. Soon it will be a pile of rubble. We'll tell you what's coming next to the near south side coming up.